Disclaimer, please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk, then play at half speed. Thank you. Kino, Lu Kang, Dan, Raven, Scorpion, Josh, Sub-Zero, Tom, We really need cooler names. You know, we could have started a podcast and had new names like every week, but you wanted to practice martial arts instead. No, you misunderstood. I said I wanted to start a martial arts podcast, but unfortunately we can't do a podcast about a sport without actually being good at the sport. I mean, it'd be like having a movie podcast without actually making any movies. Guys, why don't we have cool costumes? Look at that! Look at that! She's got spikes! This is so awesome! I'm just in shorts. Well, I mean, you guys should have at least invested in a gi and a proper belt, just like in Karate Kid. You know, Dan, this this doesn't look like a local karate tournament. <laughs> guys, that dude has a spear in his hand. Oh my god, it's shooting out and coming back in and everything, and that guy has four arms. <laughs> This is awesome! The battle for your world begins! Sub Zero versus. Please be me, please be me, please be me, please be me. Please be Dan, please be Dan, please be Dan, please be Dan. Please be Dan, please be Dan, please be Dan, please be Dan. Dan! Yes! Alright, just gotta remember what Sensei taught me. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence, paint the house, wash the car. Got it! Alright, I'm good. Hi there, uh, Mr. Zero, uh, Sub Zero, uh, Mr. Sub. You know what? It's it's fine. Um, really looking forward to our fight here. Um, I'm new, but I promise to go easy on you. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, seriously, uh, let's just uh, have some fun. And, fight! Uh, oh my God! Paint the fence! Paint the fence! Paint the fence! Paint the goddamn fence! Quarter circle forward! Back back! Forward! Back! Forward! Block! Ah! Dan! I don't think your work is gonna help here. Did you practice any actual karate? No, just the fundamentals. Run button, run. Oh God, this one doesn't have it. I'm beginning to think that you were just the gardener. <laughs> Try mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. Oh, that can actually. Flawless victory, fatality. Well, Dan's dead. What do you want to do now? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. You have to understand, that thing is out there. Ronald Lacey and Buckaroo Banzai can't be reasoned with. Plus the parents are dead. Clancy Brown to Highlander can't be bargained with. Christopher Lambert to Mortal Kombat doesn't feel pity, just like Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa to The Art of War doesn't feel remorse. Or Michael Bean in Aliens doesn't feel fear. And it absolutely will not stop. Get down. Until you take Jeanette Goldstein to Terminator 2. Judgment Day is coming to firepit.podbean.com as Dan, Tom, and Josh make their own fate and face the 90s summer blockbuster Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's the vacation determination every Tuesday here at the Fire Pit. Hasta la vista, baby. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and welcome to our 73rd episode in the third round in our vacation to Termination, which has seen us go across dimensions in time and now on to this movie, which goes across realms. As per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them onto this one. And now to give us an idea of what we're watching and who we're watching, I'll send things over to Josh. Why, thank you, Nigel. Thank you. Uh, Josh here, British name Reginald. And I've got to ask, isn't a realm just another term for dimension? Uh, yes. Okay. So last week we saw Christopher Lambert absorb his quickening from Clancy Brown and get it everywhere 
in 1986's Highlander. Tonight, instead of quickening, it'll be lightning out of his hands as he takes on the role of Lord Raiden in 1995's Mortal Kombat. The movie, based on the video game series that upset mothers and politicians all throughout the 90s. And to give us a bit more of a rundown and maybe a little bit of metadata on the film, I'm going to cross the interdimensional rift to Tom. Thank you, Reginald. Thompson here, American name Tom. And as mentioned, tonight we're watching Mortal Kombat, the 1995 hit film based on, as Josh said, the smash hit fighting video game series by then Midway Games. The games were a little controversial at the time, uh, particularly for their portrayal of violence, uh, such as blood, guts, brutal specialty moves, and most controversial of all, the fatalities, which allowed players to set their vanquished foe up for a dramatic and interesting final blow, such as, for example, setting them on fire, ripping out their hearts, or tearing off your opponent's head with their spine still attached. Something which did not sit well with parents at the time, which we will discuss later. But for now, let's discuss this movie. This movie was released on August 18th, 1995. So we're pretty close to its actual anniversary um, and off by a few years, but give or take. Running time is about 101 minutes. It had a budget of $18 million and a box office of $122.2 million. Not bad. What is kind of not so good, though, is the ratings on Rotten Tomato. It has a 44% with an audience score of 59% and an IMDb score of 6 out of 10. So with the IMDb, that's kind of average for the majority of films we've seen um, on this podcast. But man, that Rotten Tomato score, that's a that's a bit of a disparity between audience v um, uh, critics. I mean, is that the biggest? That's not the biggest. disparity, No, no, is it? No, 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 no. I didn't think think so. The Last Jedi owns that one. Well, yeah, although the Netflix TV series, the new Masters of the Universe is is coming in a good close second with an audio uh, uh, critic score of like 96 percent and an audience score of 31 percent. Gee, many Christmas. (laughs) But for for the things we've seen on this podcast, is this like one of the bigger disparities? No, No, this is not even 20 percent. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what our biggest disparity is, but there's we've seen a couple of them where like the the critics hated it, but the audience loved it, or the audience loved it, and the critics hated it. I mean, the audience hated it, but the critics not, loved not really, it. Not really something we totally track, but I know you're talking a fifteen percent change is not that big of a gap in the audience to critic. Uh, I figured for our movies because they they tend to. I mean, there there's been some disparity, but it's usually it's definitely something here, worth yeah. looking up. But yeah. But for now, now, speaking of looking up, I was able to look up some behind the scenes meta detail for this movie. So would you care to hear some? No. No. Too bad. Damn it. Mortal Kombat. Tagline. Nothing in this world has prepared you for this. Summary. Three unknowing martial artists are summoned to a mysterious island to compete in a tournament whose outcome will decide the fate of the world. No pressure, team. No pressure. Generally, this is a relatively low-budget schlock movie from a producer of schlock, a director of schlock, uh, with a television writer of arguable quality, and with only one recognizable face in the entire cast that somehow managed to be one of the most faithful and best video game adaptations, parentheses, at the time. This movie, Mortal Kombat, obviously adapted from the popular and infamous video game of the same name, uh, which was a 1v1 blood and guts fighter inspired by kung fu films like Game of Death and Enter the Dragon, 
Um, the movie itself also Bloodsport and Bloodsport. Thank you. Nato. Yeah, that's the main. That was the main inspiration for the for the first game was Jean Claude Van Damme's Bloodsport movie. Well, I'll and talk about that in trivia. Movie. Keep going. Nope, I'm, I got. I'm, I'm excited. Ble- bleeding I got, into the trivia. My bad. Just a sneak peek. Sneak peek, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, Tom. Go ahead. I'm muting myself. No, no, I'm getting no. excited. No, no. That's meanwhile, fine. in the box office. <laughs> But the movie also takes heavy inspiration from Enter the Dragon, which is a movie about a death tournament at a distant location with three protagonists who have their own reasons for being there. Famous Bruce Lee film, by the way. Excellent movie. Behind the camera, we have the producer Lawrence Kasseloff, who uh, has backed a lot of schlock before this. Uh, Chud 2, Bud the Chud. Uh, being the colon after that, a gnome named Norm and Blue Steel, which uh, those of us who love Catherine Bigelow's work uh, know that she was a writer on that film. He eventually would get lucky with True Lies right before he made this one. Uh, And then he went right back to his uh, tried and true BS with Bobbleheads the movie and soon coming to theaters when it's finished, an untitled Tetris sci-fi project. So they are adapting Tetris, and Lawrence Kasanoff is going to be producing it. Oh, good God. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. They did Battleship. I'm not saying they did Battleship good, but... No. I didn't see he did, did Battleship, so... But no, I'm just saying. Yeah. They managed to turn Battleship into a science fiction alien rock. Yeah, so that anyway, they're doing Tetris. We, they've joked about that in the past. It's like, yeah, next they're going to be making a Tetris movie. They're making a Tetris movie. And to get to write this film, he got Kevin Droney, which... We come back to this thing. It's like, why? This guy wrote exclusively television drama and action well okay actually i do see a bit of why they chose him he had done jake and the fat man and highlander the tv series before this so he had some experience with some action um he also did down came a blackbird with raul julia after this and then wing commander and then nothing else so weird choice for writing but I think much like Highlander, they did it because it was cheap. And they probably picked the director for the same reason. Paul W.S. Anderson, an action thriller director. This was only his second film. His first film was a British crime thriller called Shopping. Uh, But he would eventually go on to do some other stuff we might recognize. Event Horizon, Alien vs. Predator. The Resident Evil movies, most of them, not all of them. Uh, It should be noted that he had no experience with visual effects or fighting or anything else, but he was able to bullshit his way into this position. So kudos to him. And apologies to Nigel if I stepped on a bit of trivia on that. Oh, no, go ahead, man. That's fine. Yeah, so Guy had no reason to be directing a fighting film. And yet, here he is with an ensemble cast of characters. Uh, We've already talked about Christopher Lambert in the previous episode. Highlander, go listen to that. Uh, So I will instead be focusing on Lyndon Ashby, Bridget Wilson-Sampras, Robin Sho, and Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. So for our first protagonist is Robin Sho as Liu Kang, who's out to save the world. That's his motivation. A performance actor uh, known mostly for action and martial arts films. He was in Hard to Kill and City War, which were Chinese films. Uh, This was actually his first American film. Tragically, he would really not do much else after this film. Beverly Hills Ninja, uh, the Mortal Kombat sequel, and Street Fighter, The Legend of Chung Li. For protagonist number two, we have Bridget Wilson Sampras playing Sonya Blade, the character out for revenge. Also a performance actress, bit of everything, mostly uh, romance and comedies. Right before this, she was Veronica in Billy Madison, and she played Whitney, the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger in Last Action Hero. Uh, Since then, it's been up and downs, Wedding Planner, uh, Starstruck, Nixon. Not the best career, but certainly not the worst. Definitely better than most of the other main characters on this one. 
And finally, protagonist number three, Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage, the protagonist who's out for glory. And once more, a performance actor, also known for action and martial arts films, mostly TV and small roles before this, going back far back as 1986. He played Morgan Earp in the Kevin Costner film Wyatt Earp before this, and then went back to TV and middle-of-the-road roles, CSI Miami, Prom Night, and Resident Evil Extinction. Though he did also play Sheriff Noah in the Teen Wolf TV series. Big star right there. And as our antagonist, Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa as Shang Tsung. Uh, he's done a bit of everything. He's been in big trouble in Little China. A few small roles here and there. He also was in Star Trek The Next Generation in Encounter at Far Point. So if we got a Star Trek connector, take a drink. Also, he was in the Teen Wolf TV series as well and Tekken. So out of all of them, he had some of the best um, post Mortal Kombat films. He was in Pearl Harbor, Planet of the Apes, so on, so forth. But yeah, behind the scenes drama. Ooh, boy, this film was a challenge to make. I'm not going to go into too much details because it borders into Dan's territory, but it endured some expensive reshoots. It had pain. It had agony. There were injuries left and right. Anderson's inexperience with filming fight scenes caused a lot of weariness and some anxiety. But in the end, this film did get some praise. Reviewers loved the atmosphere, the fighting sequence, uh, the visuals. There were some criticisms that this was a blood and guts video game that got a PG-13 adaptation. But in terms of video game adaptations, this was the highest grossing adaptation of a video game. It would eventually be surpassed by Pokemon, the first movie in 1998. But no, this this one still kind of holds up as some nostalgia. Some critics called this the cinematic equivalent of Cotton Candy and Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And even Siskel said this was the only halfway decent video game movie he had ever seen. So we got a film that had some love from the critics, but I wonder if there's more trivia. So before I go much further, uh, Nigel, what's the trivia? Yeah, trivia. Uh, I've got nothing. Tom uh, was a little long winded and said all of it. No, I'm just kidding. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's meta is like really a, a, like borderline trivia tonight. Yeah. So uh, Tom mentioned uh, the production woes. There were a few. And by a few, I mean a lot. One of the biggest ones I had was where they filmed the movie was on an island. And the only way to get to it was by boat. There were no bridges that connected to the mainland. So the cast and crew and the equipment all had to be ferried in these long canoes and boats. And it was a pain in the butt. In the first couple of weeks, they had to ferry actors back to the mainland to use the bathroom and stuff. But uh, eventually they uh, they constructed an outhouse and a, uh, a dressing room. So the actors and actresses could use the bathroom and have makeup touched up and costumes touched up without having to go all the way back to the mainland. That was kind of a thing. And yeah, there was a lot of injuries in this. Robin Chow, uh, Liu Kang, actually had a you know, what he was calling an injury count. He would rate fights from one to three according to the amount of ribs that got bruised or broken. Oof, ouch. Yeah. Uh, for the reptile fight in the movie, he had a maximum score of three broken ribs. Two of them were oh broken when... God. Yeah. Two of them were broken when Keith Cook, reptile, threw him against the pillar on the 10th take. He asked Cook to avoid hitting his painful right side, finished the fight, then went to the hospital as soon as Cut was yelled. Um, yeah. Professional. Yeah. Lyndon Ashby wasn't spared either. According to Paul W.S. Anderson, Ashby at one point was in so much pain from getting kicked around that he was eating Advil like they were M&Ms. Jesus Christ. Yeah. How can I murder my actors? Yeah. Now, Paul W.S. Anderson is now pretty well known for mostly doing the Resident Evil movies and, and keeping his wife employed. And those are action heavy films, but this is actually his, only his second film, like Tom mentioned, and this was his very first action movie. So he didn't really know how to film action scenes and fight scenes. The first couple of days he was filming the big, the, the first big fight in one long wide take. 
And by the end of the day, the actors were exhausted because they, they had to do the entire fight because it was a wide shot. It was actually Robin Shaw that pulled him off to the side and said, hey, for fight scenes, you only do wide takes or like a couple of seconds just to establish the fight. Most fight scenes are done in quick cuts and um, up in close ups. And from then on, the, the, the fights went much easier and one other production woe is all of goro's scenes had to be filmed in a los angeles studio the animatronic that, that they used to portray him had to be operated by 13 to 16 people and it frequently broke down like really broke down like we're talking shark on fucking jaws broke down but unlike spielberg they can't hide goro because he's like the final boss so it's like yeah. we have to use this guy you know nowadays they just fix him with cg and which is what in the, the new Mortal Kombat movie, Goro is all CG and motion capture and all that. So, but they couldn't do that. So they didn't want to risk bringing it on the set in Thailand out of fear that it would cause even more trouble trying to get that damn thing to the island. So they ferried people back to the Los Angeles studio for the fight scenes involving Goro. Originally, he had a, a his, his fight stage was supposed to be like a sound stage with ponds of water. They were removed to prevent Goro from falling in and short circuiting. And that's also why Goro doesn't have a huge role in the movie. Because the, the, the animatronic was just really, really complicated. And I've only got a few more things. Uh, the movie is based on a controversial game series, but it actually had a bit of controversy itself among the fandom. The original script, it was supposed to be a hard R with lots of violence, blood and gore, just like the game series that it's based on. New Line Cinema forced it to be PG-13 in order to make sure that the game's primary audience, teenagers, could go see the film. Because they didn't think it could be a hit if it was R-rated. Because video games at the time, and still kind of to this day, were seen as something that teenagers play. Even though the, the game itself would be an R rating. And the new movie is an R rated. But uh, the compromise on this was the soundtrack. The studio wanted a more traditional movie score. But Anderson was, wanted a techno-heavy soundtrack as it more resembled the game's music. Mm -hmm. And he ended up winning that one in the end because the soundtrack was the first, uh, I don't know the exact genre, electro dance music. ED, it was the first EDM album to go platinum. <laughs> the the soundtrack nice. to this movie. Yeah. Good. Well, call. it is a fantastic album. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, song, that's at least. Amazing score. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely unique. Yeah. And um, I was looking up trivia for this and I got a newfound respect for Christopher Lambert. Um, I've already kind of liked him because I, like I said well, last week, I have a soft spot for the Highlander series. But um, Christopher Lambert's appearance of Raiden was essentially unpaid. Uh, they paid him the minimum, you know, that they paid him his actor fee, but they um, they couldn't afford to keep him for more than a few weeks of close ups in in an LA studio. So when they when they were going to move the shoot to Thailand, they were like, well, we'll just have to use a stand in for wide shots and stuff. But Lambert believed that the movie would be much better if it was him all the time. So he came to Thailand with no extra charge. He paid for his own hotel and he paid all of his own travel expenses and came to Thailand. So they can continue to shoot Raiden in close ups. And Christopher Lambert paid for the rap party himself because they didn't have any more money left after the end of the shoot. So it's like, good guy, Christopher Lambert. And apparently from all accounts I've read, he had an absolute blast making this film. He was a gamer. He was a big fan of the game anyways. So he love the fact that he got to do the role and they actually brought the Christopher Lambert version of Raiden back as a downloadable skin that you can get for Raiden in the current Mortal Kombat game, Mortal Kombat 11 with Christopher Lambert doing the voice of Raiden. So that's actually kind of nice. awesome. Nice. Yeah. Did, did he have any fight scenes? I don't, I don't think, I don't think he does. I don't think he does in this movie. I think he's just a, he's basically just the exposition guy. Like he's, he's just kind of explains to, um everyone else what's going on like you know oh well, this yeah, is he's like he, he sits in the corner and like when he, when somebody needs to explain something like what was that yeah like yeah the blast it was great it was an easy time everyone <laughs> knows i broke five ribs <laughs> yeah. and speaking of coming back to do the video games uh kerry hiroyuki tagawa was brought back to portray shang sung in netherrealm studios mortal kombat 11 which came out in 2019 um, also, because of the popularity of this movie, Shang Tsung was retconned in the game series to include a lot of the characters lines from this film, like your soul is mine. Uh, save your pity for the weak. Uh, the game was retconned to more accurately show Carrie Hiroyuki Tagawa's portrayal of Shang Tsung. And also, likewise, Kano, who in the original game, Kano was supposed to be Japanese American and Trevor Goddard impressed the guys so much with his what they thought was an Australian accent. They uh, 
retconned Kano to be Australian. They then f- later found out that Trevor Goddard was speaking in a Cockney accent, not a, an Australian accent, but they didn't care. They kept Kano <laughs> as Australian because Trevor Goddard had lied basically on his resume and told everybody he was Australian, not English. So he, he thought it meant help him get roles easier. Uh, it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the games kind of changed a little bit to, um, accommodate some of the stuff that was established in the movie. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, the coined phrase flawless victory, which is in the games, a match where the victor sustains no damage from their opponent was used regarding four matches in this film. However, only two of the fights meet that criteria. Really? Yeah. It's the Johnny Cage fight against Goro and the Sub-Zero match against the henchmen are the only two quote-unquote flawless victories in the whole film. All the other ones where they say flawless victory, the other guy clearly got hit. So that's not an actual flawless victory. One more thing. Outside of Kitana and a cameo by Jax, this movie only has the original fighters from the game of Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Kano, Sonya Blade, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Raiden, Goro, and Shang Tsung. Reptile was a bonus fight in the original game. You had to meet certain criteria in order to face him. And it also serves as a bonus fight in this film, too, as the fight between him and Liu Kang was not in the original script. It was added in reshoots due to uh, test audience feedback. Ah, nice little meta thing. They yeah, that, they didn't uh, intend that to happen, but yeah, uh, he wasn't in the original script. But test audiences thought they needed more action in the film, so they went back and did some reshoots. They extended the Johnny Cage Scorpion fight in the reshoots, and then they added the Liu Kang Reptile fight, which actually most audiences agree those are the two best fights in the film. Because Robin Sho had to stand in as the fight coordinator. The the original fight coordinator obviously went home and couldn't do the reshoots. So I think that's all I got. Um, Despite ending on a sequel hook, there's actually no sequel to this film. Shut up. Nope, not whatsoever. Yep. And the nope, franchise nope, was, yeah, like me. yeah. And the franchise as a film series was just uh, recently rebooted this past year. So, yep. yeah, no sequel, no, no, nothing, no, no Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Not, One and done. They, they knew when to hit it and quit it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Proud of them. That, I promise, is all I got. But uh, I know this movie made some money, but I want to know, like, how did it do at the box office? So, Josh. All right. Well, it's my turn now. So, Mortal Kombat, released August 18th, 1995, had a uh, worldwide gross and domestic gross of uh, $70 million. So, this movie was uh, about yeah an hour and 41 minutes long, so not super long, but uh, it premiered at number one. Now, there wasn't a lot in the box office. Uh, there was a few notable films, for sure. Like, number two at the box office was Dangerous Minds on its second week of release. That was the uh, Gangster's Paradise movie, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Really? That got knocked out by Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Um, number really? three was A Walk in the Clouds um, on its second week of release. Number four was Something to Talk About on its uh, third week of release. And at number five, Waterworld on its fourth week of release. Wow. Wow. Other, other notables in the box office is at number six, Babe. Number seven, The Net. Number eight, Apollo 13. Mm. Yeah. Number nine, Babysitter's Club. That premiered that weekend as well. Oh, but God. it only pulled in $3.4 million to Mortal Kombat's $23.2 million. But Kid and King Arthur's Court was at number 10. Virtuosity at number 11. I'm trying to see some other notables. Like, these are all just like... Some of these movies, movies have come up on lists, out. too. Yeah. Like, I know Virtuosity was presented one time, but yeah. Interesting. Oh, it's also... um. At number 18, The Usual Suspects premiered in 42 theaters. Ah, that film sound came up on a list recently, yeah. yeah. And uh, at number 22, on its 10th week of release, was Batman Forever. And at 23 was Braveheart. So that was on its 13th week of release. Josh, not to step on you too much here. I know you've waited a long time to talk, but correct me if I'm wrong, but back then, 1995, this movie comes out August, uh, what was it, 13th, 14th, this movie came out? 18th. 18th, Okay. Wasn't August back then kind of like a you? That's the Chuck the movies you don't think are going to make that much money in the summer in in yeah, August. That, those, those August um in even then was uh like Mortal Kombat was kind of an unexpected hit for them. Um, same way like and it's still considered that way. Like Guardians of the Galaxy was another movie that was released in August. They typically will put movies they're hoping that are going to ride the box office wave in August. Mm-hmm. They aren't contenders because you put your contenders May June July. Those are your big name movies. Typically, if they come out before then, they either move them there because they don't think they can compete with movies that come out in the heat of the summer, a.k.a. May, June, July. August typically isn't going to make as much money as the other three months in June, in summer. 
but they basically will make some money. But that's before the fall season, before people are really getting back into school. So yes, it's, it's not quite the dumping ground that uh, spring is, but it is kind of uh, something that we just don't trust it's going to be as big. So we're hoping that it will just kind of ride the wave and keep people going to the uh, box office. Yeah, I kind of figured. And then, then like August is a weird time because kids go back to school and summer vacations are ending, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, all, most of these movies that I was reading off, hell, even Casper was in here. Clueless. Those were on their like fifth and tenth weeks of releases. So these movies had already been out for the summer. Now, Box Office Mojo, I don't know if it's reporting all the numbers, but it has it running through September. Um, I really doubt that it ran that long. Or it ran that short, I should say. I think it kept running. It's just the numbers weren't tracked. But on its final week of release, according to Box Office Mojo, it stayed number one for three weeks. And then it dropped to three, seventh, and then 11. They uh, stopped tracking the numbers after they get below a certain threshold Mm -hmm. for some movies. So like uh, Mortal Kombat... The last recorded weekend, it was at number 11 on the box office. That was its sixth week of release. Wow. Uh, but you want to know what uh, movie premiered that weekend? Hmm. Which weekend again? September 22nd, 1995. That's the movie that knocked this one off the number one? or No, no, no. This is just the movie that premiered its last reported week. Oh, uh... Let's see, it was September 1995. Uh... Give us a hint. Just give us a hint. Uh, we use a phrase from this movie in our podcast fairly frequently. Gross. <laughs> for fuck's sake what <laughs> yes all of those came from this movie um, I'm going to tell you it and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about I probably am and I'm probably um, going to face Paul what's in the box oh seven really there you go Yeah. Really? seven was the same year as Mortal Kombat seven was six weeks after it's Mortal so Kombat weird was when you think about that I th- yeah it is I thought it was like 98 or 99. Wow. Yeah. Seven was 1990. Uh, you know, this Showgirls was the number two that weekend as well. It also premiered. But like, there's a movie we that? need to get to. No, we don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But what, what do you guys think was the top grossing movie of 1995? Was this one of them? It's because, candy. I mean, this movie was only like, it cost less than 20 million to make and it made 120 some odd million in the theater. So, well, but keep in mind, this top grossing doesn't take profit into account. Oh, okay. So Top- if a movie grossed two hundred million dollars but it cost hundred and ninety five million to make, that doesn't matter. They just look at the total numbers. Okay. Um ninety five. It wasn't Star Trek first contact, because I think that happened Top in- Grossing wait, nineteen ninety five? Yep. Don't it wasn't a Batman film. Was it Batman V be- was it uh- what was that? The third Batman film called Batman Forever. Yes, it was Batman. Oh my Forever. god! I was on mute and I was shouting Batman Forever. The- <laughs> that's what you get for going on mute. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for going on mute, Nigel. Oh, uh, damn it! Yeah, because I was like, Tom was going, "What's the third Batman movie?" And I'm like, "Batman Forever." <laughs> Nobody was listening to me because, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yep, Batman Forever grossed 184 million dollars that year. That is crazy because that's how much movies make in a weekend nowadays. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Like, I think Avengers Endgame made that on Friday night when it came out. Yeah. But Mortal Kombat ended its box office run at 17th, making $70 million that year. Wow. Yeah. But that's all I have got for uh, the box office at seven minutes and 31 seconds. Not that so, he was um, keeping track. Not that he was keeping track. Our, our director, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Dan, what, what, um, like, you've seen this film, right? Oh, yeah. Plenty of times. So, so what are you hoping to uh, get out of this this viewing? Um, it's gonna be it's a bad movie. Like, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. But it is the one of the best. It, it, I still think it holds up to this day as one of the best video game adaptations of in film. Like, I it's a hell of a lot better than its counterpart, Street Fighter, was as a movie. Although this is severely lacking in um, Raw Julia. You know, but um, it's still better than Street Fighter. At least they kind of kept to the source material. Street Fighter, they kind of made them a the movie Street Fighter kind of makes the Street Fighter gang into like a almost like G.I. Joe. And they're fighting M. Bison's group, which is the stand in for Cobra. I, I think Street Fighters is an unofficial movie of the G.I. Joe movie universe. 
but like not to step on your toes too, but we remember the remember the toy commercials? They were essentially G.I. Joe toys. Right, right. So I'm just saying, but they changed the actual format of the Street Fighter games. Like the Street Fighter games and the Mortal Kombat games have very similar stories in that an evil guy is holding a tournament. And Street Fighters to determine who the best fighters are in the world, and in Mortal Kombat it's to eventually take over Earth. Like but the two plots are similar. This one follows that a lot better than Street Fighter did. But what am I expecting to get out of this film? I don't know. I think I'm just expecting to have fun watching it with you guys. I really do. And that's all I want. I mean, I, I'm not expecting to be wowed by this film. I've seen it a bunch of times. In fact, I just recently watched it over the last couple of months when the new one came out. I watched it in contrast. But I think we're going to have fun watching this. I really do think this is going to be a fun, stupid movie that we can just kind of enjoy. Uh, What about you, Josh? Have you seen it before? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. 1995. I was 12 years old. Hell, yeah. I saw this movie. <laughs> you were the target audience. I was. I was the target audience. Was this one of those ones where your parents took you to see it or something like that? Did I see this in theaters? I don't remember if I saw this in I did four I times. I don't recall. Um, yeah, I, I definitely saw this movie. I love the soundtrack. It's been on my uh, workout playlist since 1995. Yeah, it's like I remember one time. I've seen it since then, but this is one of my most memorable viewings. It was during my um, anniversary 10 years ago. Because uh, I know this exactly 10 years ago. So 2011, I was on my anniversary. We were, uh, we got back to the hotel room. My wife passed out and I watched Mortal Kombat. Now you're saying, well, that's sucks. Your wife passed out on your anniversary. My wife was like pregnant at the time with my son. And that's why I know it's 10 years ago because my son just turned 10. But I, I remember even thinking then this movie sucks, but I absolutely love it. But it's been a while since I've seen it. And I just recently rewatched not rewatched. I just recently finally picked up um, the 2021 Mortal Kombat because I knew we were watching this one. So I was curious. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I got it. I watched it. Um, I didn't hate it, but um, I acknowledge that it's definitely not a great film, but that's an, that's a review for another time. So I'm really looking forward to watching it tonight because, you know, Dan, you say you watch the new one and then you rewatch the old one. I wanted to rewatch this one, but I'm like, I gotta wait because we're about to watch this movie. I did it in reverse. I watched I watched this one like a two weeks before the new one was released. Um, just to compare and contrast, this one yeah. I think sticks closer. Yeah, there's a tournament in this one. Yeah, there's a tournament in this one, and the the new one kind of sort of serves as a prequel or a jump off point before. Mortal Kombat actually starts. Yeah, and it definitely fleshes out some of the villains a little bit. Yeah, it fleshes out the villains a little bit better. And I do like the fact in the new one, the, the main characters get to use their special moves a little bit better or more in this oh, yeah, than they, they did in this. tie that into the actual story. Yeah. But uh, yeah, th that's all my uh, expectation. I know it's going to be a bad film, and I, but I know I'm going to also have fun. Like kind of a Tango and Cash, uh, Days of Thunder situation. Like I'm not expecting gold out of this movie, but that's what I got. Tom, how about you? Have you seen this film? Of course. I mean, come on. We were we were 90s kids. Of course we saw this film. Who didn't? Although I don't think I saw this. Did I see this in theaters? Yeah, you were one of the four times I went to go see it. I thought so. <laughs> the the mid-90s are kind of a blur. I don't think we told my parents that I went to see this film because nope. coming from a Catholic family, I got grounded for playing mortal Kombat, and it was with blood off you had the option of not like turning the blood off and i had blood off in that game and i got grounded for like a week that summer because of that so me watching the movie probably would have got me at least a couple of weeks <laughs> just saying and yeah kid tom was very down with this film and, I mean, come on, fighting, Goro, finish him, your soul is mine. And the fight scenes with um, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, enough said. As for currently, what am I expecting? I'm not going to lie, I'm actually excited for this now. Uh, when I was looking up for the meta and everything that went into this and all the physicality that went behind it and the injuries... Uh, considering that this was just an intellectual property cash grab uh, and learning that despite that, Paul W.S. Anderson did his damn best to make this as quality a film as he freaking could. Well, it didn't help that 
it helped that Paul W.S. Anderson was a huge fan of the games. The first two mm. games were out by the time this movie came out, and the third one was in production. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul W.S. Anderson was a huge fan of the games, and he 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 basically took this job because no one other no one else wanted it. A lot of directors were like, "Video game movie? Like, no, I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole." Yeah, yeah. And have you Paul, seen Have you seen Mario Brothers? Yeah, yeah. no way, Jose. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> Cats yeah, off to him for at least like being like, oh man, I want to try to make it as true to the games as I possibly can. Yeah, this was only his second film, and he could have phoned this in, and no one would have even noticed because it was his only his second film. But he didn't. So in that sense, like I say, in a meta sense, I'm just ready to see that, especially considering we've seen some films on this podcast by more seasoned directors with higher budgets. Who could have given half a shit about what they were doing? Cough, cough, Wimbledon. Cough. <clears throat> Sorry, I got some bullshit stuck in my throat there. Take a drink. Take a drink. He's not kidding, mom and dad. He's not kidding. That movie sucked. It was yes. awful. Awful. My God. Go listen to that episode so you don't have to watch that film. Now, I'm not expecting the same level of exuberance I had as a kid. Yeah, I think at this point, most... um made for tv movies have a better budget and choreography and sets than this film did but i'm like highlander before um this sounds like the producers were just trying to squeeze a dollar out of a dime but they made it into a gem of a film and i'm gonna appreciate going through and just pointing at the scenes like okay all right good job buddy i i see what you're doing there I mean, it's not the best or prettiest souffle, but you got it out of the oven, and that's what counts. Uh, But now I think we can discuss marrying all of our thoughts together into one souffle of a thought. Or burnt pie in the stove, right, Dom? Well, I never did burn the pie yet. I'd even get it past the filling stage. Um, Now, Josh, you came from a similarly Christian family background. Catholic, yeah. Um, so how was your family towards this genre um, series uh, of Mortal Kombat? I honestly, I'm thinking back on it. I don't think I actually got into the series until Mortal Kombat 4. I had a friend who played Mortal Kombat 2 religiously. <laughs> um, I would go over to his house all the time and we would play. He loved fighting games like when N64 came out, he loved Killer Instinct. Mm. Um, I remember, it's like I asked him one time, it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just eating and watching Mortal Kombat. My head immediately went to the movie. Mm. Um, I rode my bike over to his house, and he was still eating and watching Mortal Kombat 2, the game. Like watching like, the game? Set it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, you could there was a, cause you could set it to where two CPUs would fight each other. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Just, and he would do that, and he would watch the game, and he would watch them fight. And, like, dude was dedicated. Um, I've never been a huge fan of fighting games. Like, I tried to get really good at Mortal Kombat 4 for the N64. I couldn't. I could never do the fatalities. Um, so these fighting games have never... They're almost... Uh, they're, they're not as poorly received as Westerns, but they're almost my Westerns of the video games. Mm. Ooh, wow. Maybe, maybe if you know. just got good, you wouldn't, like, hate them so much. There's a Penny Arcade comic that came out years ago. It's just where, like, Gabe's like, I could just, I just got to practice. And then Tycho's all like... No, just, you know how you think you're good at something? Or I forget the punchline <laughs> of the joke, but it's just like, but I can, I, I, I like to bake or something. He's like, no, you you suck at baking or something. I forget the punchline. Yeah, I am not good at fighting games. I've never been good at fighting games, and I don't think I'm ever going to get good. But I do love the movie. Um, I played the other ones. I definitely rented them and played like Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3. Mm-hmm. But um, my household, my my parents growing up, they, they did not like the violent games. Definitely, when I got into Grand Theft Auto 3, they wasn't a huge fan of that one. But uh, it was never like, you're going to get grounded type thing. I mean, shit, it was, what, two years later, I went to see Starship Troopers by myself. (laughs) My parents dropped me off. That was the film I was thinking of. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I I think I probably rented the game a couple of times, but I wasn't as religiously into it as I used to. Like, I would probably set it on easy and play through the single player. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'd be like, I'm really good at this game. Invite my friends over to play. I remember this one time. My cousin Andre, he came over. We was playing N64 Mortal Kombat 4. 
and um, I had been playing the shit out of it. I could beat it on hard mode. And then um, he came over, and I'm like, dude, you want to play? And I'm thinking I'm going to show off to him because I had figured out one character, and I figured out, like, two of his special moves. So I, was, I, I thought I was hot shit. And we just start playing, and he kicks my ass <laughs> over and over <laughs> and over. Turns out that he plays the shit out of that game, and he was just being nice. <laughs> Dan and I had a friend like that too, Gino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah then, that, Gino, uh, Gino's come to Jesus moment wasn't Mortal Kombat though. I could actually match Gino on Mortal Kombat and beat him re- re- regularly. It was Golden Golden Eye. He was like God at Golden Eye. And then we had another friend yeah. that comes over, and they play. And this friend is just whipping the crap out of Gino at Golden Eye. Like Gino can't do anything right. This guy's just kicking his butt. And I think Gino had a blue screen of death kind of moment like where he just kind of he was like shut down yeah he just shut down and sat in the corner and stared at the wall for the rest of the night it's like you broke gino we didn't break gino ben broke gino oh that, that's what you would say to him oh yeah yes. the other guy. yeah much like your friend broke you josh although i will i will there is kind of a come up in story not f- fighting games wise i am fucking awesome at super smash brother and you can attest to that that's the only fighting game i'm good at who, yeah, quick tangent before we get back to it. Who is your best character in um, Smash? Uh, it depends. Um, I really haven't figured out a really good one for the latest one because I played the shit out of it when it first came out, the one on <laughs> Switch. But on Melee, I was undefeated with Sheik. Oh, Sheik is such a cheap care. Gods. No, no, Sheik is good if you're good with her. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, they're not like Pikachu where it's just move spam after move spam. Yeah. It's a legitimate strategy. Yeah. Tom's best Pikachu. character is Pikachu, which is cheap as hell. Like the cheapest oh, character. God. Like cheap Pikachu is actually forbidden in some tournaments. I had a friend who played the shit out of Pikachu. He thought he was so good. And we could beat him with any other character, but he's like, well, let me play Pikachu. You're all just jealous. But Nigel, back to you before I just before <laughs> this becomes the um Smash Brothers power yeah. hour. Yeah. I yeah mean, what about we, you? Yeah, I mean oh God, some yeah, I remember Nigel, you and I playing Mortal Kombat all the time because my parents wouldn't let me. <laughs> yeah. So one of those situations where you didn't want to risk getting in trouble, so you just went over to the friend's house. Oh yeah, I had it on my play. Sega. Gen- I had it on. I remember uh, I had it for Sega. Gen- I had Mortal Kombat two and Mortal Kombat three for Sega Genesis, and Tom had a Sega Genesis as well. And I went over to Tom's house one time to play games with them, you know, and uh, I had it in my bag. I had I brought Mortal Kombat with me in a couple other games and. And you would have thought I brought drugs in the house. Like I showed Tom, I opened up the bag and hold up, held up Mortal Kombat. Tom's like, put that away, put that away. Put that. My mom sees that, we're going to die. <laughs> you would have thought I brought a bong into the house or something. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, I thought this was an Xbox controller. Yeah. So, yeah. My parents didn't have the stigma about Mortal Kombat that I remember. I just remember that when mom found out I had the game, I wasn't allowed to play it around Tony. But Tony is actually really good at Mortal Kombat, so I obviously broke that rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you couldn't play it around Tony because Tony played it all the rest of the time. Yeah, yes, uh, pretty much. Like, uh, and, and I'm still a big fan of the games to this day. In fact, I, I have the most recent one, Eleven, on my PlayStation. I play it all the time. It's one of my unwind games. Like, I come home from work and I just I, I, I play a little Mortal Kombat to unwind. Um, I love the fact that the fatalities and the violence in the games have just gotten so over the top that they're almost a parody of themselves now. In the ultimate case of being a really bad older brother and a really bad parent, I took my daughter to go see the Mortal Kombat movie a couple of months ago. And we had a blast. We had a blast. Yes, yes. She's, internet yeah. outrage. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I took her to go see it. We had a blast. There's a moment in the movie where Kung Lao basically uses his hat as a buzzsaw and shoves someone through it. And my daughter's reaction was, (laughs) my daughter's reaction was, hey, it's like in the games. (laughs) So. You are a terrible father, Dan. My 10 year old and 12 year old watched it too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah, Claire. And there was another one where I, I can't remember the other. Oh, when Jax uses his, he does basically does his Mortal Kombat 2 fatality where he smashes that guy's head with his robot arms or whatever and he just smashed that guy's head and popped it like a melon and my daughter goes so that was a thing that happened bad parent don't care we had fun we hadn't been to the movies in over a year at that point we were willing to see anything so i i as the seven outraged people on the internet are so (laughs) outraged by this outrage yeah outrage. so so yeah hashtag cancel day into the fire pit but I don't care. We had a good time watching it. But anyways, yeah, I'm the target audience for this movie. I saw it a thousand times when it came out in theaters four. 
And then I saw it a thousand more times when it came out on VHS and whatever. It was one of the very first DVDs I ever owned. <laughs> it's like when I got a DVD player, one of the very first DVDs I bought was this movie. So, oh, yeah, I loved watching this whenever it came on TBS. I mean, with commercials, obviously, but yeah. To me, this movie's bittersweet. I still enjoy it. And if you just look at it outside of the video game, just look at it as kind of like a callback to martial arts films of the 70s and the 80s. It stands up okay. I mean, it's no worse than some Chuck Norris films from the 80s or whatever. So I thought it was pretty cool. It's just disappointing that the sequel is so, 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 so bad. Oh, my God. Like, the sequel is so bad. And I'm not saying this movie was Citizen Kane, but my God. I can't costumes yeah, you, you, you called that uh, the first one was a cash grab but it was a cash a, pa- a cash grab by a passionate director hmm. the sequel was such a, pa- a cash grab yeah if you actually if you if, if there's and i know there's people out there because these movies do make a shit ton of money but if you're someone out there who enjoys the resident evil films and there are people out there because they're, they're like the transformers films like they're always getting like 30 percent on rotten tomatoes but then making a shit ton of money but um if you enjoy the Resident Evil films, thank Mortal Kombat Annihilation uh, because they wanted Paul W.S. Anderson to come back. He turned it down. He went on to make Event Horizon, which, I mean, that's a good movie, so it's okay. But Having recently rewatched it, it's, it's, a, it's a fun movie for sure. It's definitely, yeah, I still like it. It's you know. visually striking and unique. That I will give it. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like hollow but yeah go ahead well, i was just saying paul ws anderson regretted not doing mortal Kombat annihilation because he hates that film join the club paul everyone hates that film but um because that movie's just too much this movie's nice because they keep the characters nice and and confined to only like eight or nine like the original roster of the first game and then in this by the time the second one came around they had ultimate mortal Kombat three was in the theaters and they're like, oh, it's got like 27 characters in. Oh, can we put all of them in the movie? Uh, like, I mean, every, like I knew at the time my favorite character was Sub-Zero. It's like all of his scenes were in the trailer for that movie. Yeah, same yeah. with Scorpion. All the Scorpion scenes are in the trailer in that movie. Shang Tsung is supposed, or not Shang Tsung, Shao Kahn, the, the big boss, the big bad. He's supposed to be this big giant guy with, with this skull mask on. And the skull mask is supposed to actually fit his head frame and all that. And the guy playing Shao Kahn in the film, while not a bad actor isn't exactly built like you would imagine Shao Kahn to be. So when he wears the Shao Kahn skull mask, he kind of looks like a child in cosplay. <laughs> he really yeah. does. In fact, they use a scene from that and they're in a meme for the new Mortal Kombat film because in him in full costume and he looks like a kid in cosplay because the mask is way too freaking big for his head. And it says my 13 year old butt standing in line to see the Mortal Kombat film this week, you know, so the sequel's just so bad. And that's why this movie's a little disappointing because it, it, I thought it was a decent film and it ends on a pretty good sequel hook. And then the sequel happened. And I, yeah. I don't, I can't think of a more disappointing sequel than Mortal Kombat Annihilation, maybe yeah. outside of Terminator Dark Fate, but yeah, I paid to see a Mortal Kombat two. Mm-hmm. Two. That's I paid full price. I think I, I rented that one, and I was I was I was disappointed. Oh, it's one, just too. awful. It's just like loads and loads of characters. The fight scenes make no sense because they just have to get all these characters in. The costumes look like something from freaking Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, and then like some of the fight scenes, you can clearly see it's their fight double fighting and not actually them it's just it's so bad but anyways paul ws anderson regretted doing mortal or not he did he regretted not doing mortal kombat 2 so one of the reasons why he stayed with the resident evil movies is because he want he he wants to maintain the continuity and the quality of the resident evil movies in the sense of like it's it, it's just kind of a thing it's like he he wants the movies to be at least passable so to speak i i I've seen all the Resident Evil films. They do vary in quality, but none of them, none of the Resident Evil movies are as bad as Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So I will give Paul W.S. Anderson that much. So I think the second Resident Evil might stand toe to toe on that one, but we can discuss that if and when we ever get to it. Crossing my fingers, we never do. <laughs> but uh, I would think Ooh, that uh, we're pretty good at clearing up our own thoughts on this. Yeah, one. I think yeah. we're good. I think we said all we can say. We just need to go watch it. Well, mm. actually, before we watch it, we need to find out what other people thought of this film oh no i mean oh, oh yeah. No. yeah so um all right let's see if i can defend my uh <laughs> my streak so i mean i mean let's hope i can win yeah you guys are lucky that i just remembered i had it although i actually remembered on <laughs> thursday that i had trivia so um i remember during our table read when i was scrolling down through the um script i'm like oh i have trivia shit yeah <laughs> so 
Anyways, uh, let's start with Josh. Okay, what's what's the quiz, Nigel? For those that have never heard this, oh, any other oh, right, right, the this. same. Okay, so the same old quiz. It used to be a prize that the winner of the quiz gets to do it next week. It has since become a punishment. So, uh, but the quiz is we basically just mine IMDb for some IMDb reviews, and the one person presents the quiz, and the other or presents the review. The other two guess the review score out of ten. And the closest to, we do Price is Right rules, so the closest to the score without going over by two, uh, or within a two as a margin, I think, is, uh, without going over, I meant to say, is uh, that's who gets the point. So, and you get double points if you get the score right on the money, so. If you're even distance apart from the review, so like if the review is eight and somebody picks a seven and the other person picks a nine, the person, like you said, without going over. Yeah, the seven would get the point, not the nine. Mm-hmm. so okay but uh and i think right now i'm on a seven uh movie losing streak yeah but if, if winning streak but if the movie scores is a seven s- movie winning streak <laughs> something like that yeah. but if the movie score is like a six and one person chooses two and the other person chooses uh seven or eight then the, the seven or eight gets the point because that's too mm-hmm. far away and goes yeah, they have to be even distance yeah. apart to go yeah. lower so, or without going so over. crisis but i'm i'm definitely on a seven week streak seven <laughs> movie streak um, let's see if I can hold. I'm just gonna fucking lie and give Josh all the points, so he has to do quiz next week. Yeah, winner gets to could. do quiz. It's not like it's not like we validate this. <laughs> no. You guys could be doing this behind my back. Like, let's see how long we go before Josh <laughs> actually starts calling her, us out on this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I go and I check to see. It's like, no, that's bullshit. That was a six star review. <laughs> Note to self: When I win this quiz, all right. So, Josh, we're gonna start with you. Jay Wolfenstein says MK wisely avoids inventing plot in unwelcome places and sticks to the game as frequently as it can get away with. Actually, the biggest contradiction that comes to mind is Scorpion and Sub-Zero are on the same team. Diehard fans will call the screenwriter on this, but the rest of us won't care. Let's say they didn't have any backstory until like the later Mortal Kombat. Right? No, it was the, the second ones when they start to establish the mortal enemies. Yeah. Um, screw it. Let's go 10. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna say I, I've been trying to play conservative and uh, I've been losing. But then again, you know, maybe I should go. All right, well, balls to the walls. I'm gonna play conservative and go with a seven. It's a three star review. Tom actually gets the play. <laughs> That's the three star review. Yeah. Wow. He put it. Mm, internet. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. Work. So. I mean, I mean. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> yes. QL CQ, whatever. Um, his review is one line. Paul, what have you done? What have you done, Paul? One star. Damn, you stole mine. Uh, I'm going to go two star. Josh's closest is a five star review. That's. A- <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm going to start checking IMDb right. to see what I know. Like. I know. Trust. I, I promise these scores are legit. All right, Josh. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you can't say these names, I swear. It's like they're freaking Eastern Europe names, and there's like no vowels, all consonants. Okay. In most cases, films about martial arts have at least a piece of humor. But this film is ridiculous all the time. Anyways, it's not that bad. In some way, it's a feature of this work. As for me, the most ridiculous thing is the adaptation of Lord Raiden. The special voice and jokes that go along with his smile is just killing me. Seven. <laughs> Three. Josh is closest. It's a nine-star review. <laughs> Damn it, I'm winning. <laughs> I don't know anything anymore. Wow. <laughs> All right, Tom. Oslage says, the fight scenes are horrible. There's too many of them, and they are so violent that one becomes sickened by it all. Really, he's complaining about fight scenes. And Anyways, there's also excessively loud techno music to add to this disaster. I would prefer watching the old Shaw Brothers Kung Fu movies than this banal viewing. Fuck you too, buddy. Wow. Dude, I didn't make the film and I'm offended. Jesus. <laughs> I know. God. Watch, this is going to be a high review. This is going to be a 10. I'm saying one. I was going to say one, but uh, shit, if I say two and it's not a one, shit. Damn it, Josh. Don't do it. I'm going to say three. <laughs> Josh is closest. It's a five-star review. <laughs> Fuck. 
<laughs> I'm not joking. I will link all of these and you guys can check for yourself. I'm sorry. I'm not joking. It's a five star review. This guy should. Dude. I thought it was going to be at least a two or a three. I no, I, had to, I was thinking it might be a two. I had to cut that one down. That was that whole entire review was ranting about how excessive the fight scenes were and how violent the movie is. And I'm like, wait, are you. Which movie are you watching? Cause, I mean, this movie's violent, but it's like not as that violent, anyways. Yeah, but uh, they gave they gave it a five star. They so gave all that hate five star. Josh is winning. Tom, you need to come back and win this. Get it to get it on the money this time. <laughs> all right. Uh, who's this to? Josh? Tom? Josh. Yeah, it's to me. All right, Josh. The four-armed Goro was cute, and there's some splendid martial arts skills on display in the film, but it's not a patch on a good Hong Kong action film. Um, Keep in mind, this is opposite day on IMDb, apparently, so... Seven. Right. Yeah. yeah. Josh said seven. Tom? Oh, he said seven? Come on, Tom. On the money. On the money, Tom. Oh, God, I don't know what No this. whammies, no whammies, no whammies. I want to... No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Four. <laughs> Someone's laughing. I don't know if it's Dan or Josh. Dan. I'm sorry, Josh, but you got to do trivia next week. It's a seven out of ten. <laughs> Holy shit! On the money! <laughs> <laughs> Can I change my answer? <laughs> the streak is over! As soon as you said seven, I'm trying so hard not to laugh. Oh my god! I thought I was going to be on the money with four. I swear to god! So I was quiet and started laughing. I'm like, oh, thank god. <laughs> Shit. I was honestly not trying to tank this. I was trying to win. Holy I, I, shit. I wasn't honestly trying to tank it either, but uh, I'm not gonna, I wasn't expecting I'm it. not going to lie, guys. <laughs> I know that IMDb changed their format on their website a little bit. So while I was going through these reviews yesterday, I had to double check and make sure I wasn't accidentally seeing the score at the top, which is the review above this one, and making sure I was seeing the correct score. So I was like, wait a minute. This guy's blasted this whole movie, and he gave it a five? Oh, scroll yeah. back up. No. No, it's... Wow. Okay. So I, I'm not lying. Like these reviews were so weird. Like they sound like they're praising the film and they give it a one. They sound like they're shitting all over the film and they give it a seven. <laughs> it's like okay. So 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 if I go through and I, I reference it, and I find out you missed one and Tom actually got it on the money. Does that mean Tom's got it next? No, week? it's official now. This is. Um... I, I honestly think that just I, I got exhausted talking about that, and I would rather make this the. Uh... It's like I would spend more more energy actually trying to. Co- refute the uh, my win than i would actually doing the t- quiz yeah i think i think at this point the only thing that needs to be said is tom play the music welcome back to another tournament tier episode of the fire pit i am as always your interspersal host editor and sensei tom Here at my dojo, you will learn the secret techniques known only to the true masters passed down over thousands of years. Now, for your first lesson, I shall teach you Fetch My Groceries. You can ignore the milk items on that list. What we have should still be good, but um, definitely want to be sure to get the eggs. Now, my student, learn! But thank you for staying good with us and learning with us here at the Fire Pit. The team learned the art of the sword in the last episode, and now they're learning the way of the fist as they fight their way through the vacation to termination. It can't all be fun in the sun as they go to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Sometimes you gotta put in a little work. And speaking of work, let's get back to the stands and see where the team is in terms of their tournament. Holy shit, you can die here? I I guess that's what happens when your body is frozen solid and punched into a thousand pieces. It wasn't the shattering that hurt, it was when my body froze solid that really hurt. What the fuck? Dan, why are you blue and transparent? 
Oh, uh, this is like my soul form or uh, ghost or whatever. Um, I don't know. I just needed to be in the skit. Say what now? The joke only works if you don't overthink it. The next battle begins. Oh, oh shit. shit. Why are you worried, Dan? You're already dead. Oh, um, habit. Scorpion versus Josh. Oh, shit. Get over here. Oh, God. See? He's got that spear thing. It's kind of cool, right? Oh, oh, Josh! Yeah, you gotta watch out for that spear thing. He really likes it. Oh. oh. Uppercut. Uppercut. It's like he doesn't even know what the block button is. Oh, no. Josh, no. Sweep the leg. Sweep. Oh, my God. Corby wins. Flawless victory. Fatality. Well, that was embarrassing. It really was. Yeah. So, uh, how do you like being a ghost? I blew myself. Get it? Because I'm, I'm blue. Transparent. Stop. New challenger. What? Tom versus Reptile. He wasn't even on the roster. Why isn't it someone else's turn? Why does it have to be me? Come on! Yeah, hey, Tom, 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 Tom. Josh? We knew what we signed up for. Okay, we didn't really. But, you know, we, we, we wanted to get into martial arts. But we would probably still be alive, you know, if we just went with the podcast idea. <laughs> I did it. I recommend it. That joke was a meta joke. Because you see, in the real world... Fight! Uh, See you in a second, Tom. Hey, I have pause, pause, pause. You have to let me check my move set. I have to got the move set. Where's my Nintendo guy? It's like, oh, oh god! Ah, birds! It birds! Ah! Why do you keep using the same move over and over again? That's cheating! Ruff, Ruff, why are you not calling the fight? Ow, ow, ow. And I think we have a new contender for chewing on scenery. Yes, we do. Help me! Oh, cruel world, how hath thee forsaken me? Stop mocking me! This isn't funny! This hurts! He has acid dick! Just shut up, buddy. Wow. They really do emphasize the mortal in mortal combat, don't they? Oof. But if you have some recommendations that you'd like to emphasize, or if you have some products that you would like to emphasize in some ads, or if you just want to emphasize some other things on your mind, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the focus of your email. Whether it's to commission an ad, ask a question, send some kudos, point out an error in need of correction, and send it on over. From there, we'll read it, train it in all the ways of combat, send it to Outworld to represent Earthrealm in Mortal Kombat? And never respond. Spoiler alert, it didn't make it very far. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com Ah, you have done well, my young student. Oh, you even got those good eggs, too. Oh, now for the most challenging technique, getting back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. Somebody else press play. I don't want to touch my fucking computer right now. I'll press play in three, or, or Dan will. Wait, I oh see. Oh my Josh. god, I hear something. Oh my, oh my god! Can you see? Don't I've seen... fucking move. <laughs> Hold on, I want to rewind it a little bit. I want to see. No! I want to hear, I want to hear no! that theme song again. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. <laughs> don't, don't you I'm dare! I'm gonna turn on subtitles. No, please, for the love of God! <laughs> we just got it started.
For those listening, we are two minutes into this episode, and already everything is going wrong. Dan has thoughts. <laughs> already. <laughs> I'm emailing whoever uh, produced this movie and said, hey, whoever did your subtitles, Raiden spelled R-A-I-D-E-N. <laughs> this sounds like knockoff crazy train. Hey, mister, you're in my chair. Well, there can be only one. In the chair. Hi, Johnny. As to Boyd. Oh, I thought that was Christopher Lambert. That kind of ruined my joke. God damn it, bearded man. <laughs> you were supposed to be Christopher Lambert. Kano steals the show in the reboot. He does, really. Well, Kano kind of steals the show a bit in this movie, too. There's not much to steal. It's like going into a Taco Bell and stealing a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh! No one in that club reacted to her shooting a dude with a shotgun. It's in Hong Kong. Maybe it's like an everyday thing. You know how some clubs have like bubble parties? No, that one has like gun parties. The director really likes his monochromatic lighting. It's like hard greens, hard blues, hard reds. Hard ons. You want me to carry your luggage? I pay money, you carry the bags. I got it. Oh, thank God I didn't ask him to park the car. Da 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 da. Da. That's our Johnny! Simple <laughs> contest. Don't decide these things, Grandfather. How can you, a wise man, believe this? We all believe in it, including your brother. Yeah, my brother also thought the world was flat, so. Uh -oh. that, that's a Goro right there. <laughs> he's got four arms. Do you think he's got two? What now? What? If he's got four <laughs> arms, do you think he has two, you know? No. Wow, so, so realistic. realistic. I hate you, Tom. <laughs> it's for like those, I was there. For those in the audience, we just saw what has to be $5 million worth of 90 CG. And it was... The budget. It was glorious. It was absolutely fucking glorious is what it was. Made Jar Jar Binks look like... Well, Jar Jar Binks. Ah. So we've had like three fights back to back to back. Yeah, once the fights get going, the movie actually is better. <laughs> because they're not talking. <laughs> they're just fighting. Who paused it? I did. Why? Well, I, I didn't mean to. I pushed a button. There, okay? It's working, all right? You guys can stop getting mad at me. It's working. I'm not no, mad I'm at mad. you. I'm my butthole just clenched so hard, I think I felt <laughs> it in my fucking throat <laughs> so, so much, shove a lump of coal up josh's ass tomorrow morning we'll get a diamond pretty much flawless victory it wasn't a flawless victory you clearly got hit multiple times in that match do you know where we're going i know exactly where we're going katana went this way she's been through here as he's moving cobwebs johnny cage isn't the sharpest tool in the shed <laughs> no, sir, no. I'll give me a break. Okay. 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 In in her defense, you did set her up for that. So how long are you gonna keep encouraging him? Because we all know he's gonna die. Oh no! You got this. Non mower. Non mower. <laughs> Hate the goddamn fence. I have nothing further to teach you, Luke. You haven't taught me anything. <laughs> you can't even spell your own goddamn name right. God damn it! Stop spelling Raiden wrong. Is there an after credits scene? I don't think there. There's anything. There's after no. Credit. And there was never a um sequel to this film. So I know yeah. such a good sequel hook, but no sequel. Yeah. Uh, no, again, they knew when to leave, you know just leave well enough alone. Yeah, it languished in development hell, and they just recently rebooted the series a couple months ago. That was a smart move on their part. Yeah, I mean, really, how do you top that? You just don't. And now, back to the episode. It truly was a Mortal Kombat of technical difficulties. and It did test our might. That's for sure. Stop. All right, so that was Mortal Kombat, 1995 classic martial arts film based on the classic martial arts game. 
Uh, we just finished it up. Shao Kahn is come for our souls and has led it to a sequel hook that unfortunately the sequel never happens. So unfortunately, we're just forced to only talk about this film tonight. And we're going to start things off with Tom, your final thoughts on this. The only film in this particular version of Mortal Kombat. Oh, and then a shame, too, because you're talking classic films, Nigel. And this is a classic reason why this film should never have had a sequel to begin with. This was <laughs> bad. This was just bad. Oh, my God. Respect to all the work that went into making this. But, ugh. I liken it to this. I had a family gathering this weekend, and... I was attempting to make a lemon pie uh, with no recipe, just inventing my own recipe. Had no idea how to make this thing. And one hand, I learned how to make marmalade. On the downside, I did not make a pie. This is this situation here. Paul W.S. Anderson had no idea how to make a kung fu film, and he wound up making marmalade? I don't know. He made shit. This was a shit film christ if it wasn't for the nostalgia behind it and kind of like the appreciation for everything that went into making it i would have been miserable through it i think i'm for my end i'm gonna right now but until we get to merging our thoughts i'm gonna focus on the air quotes dialogue i, I get it this is supposed to be a video game adaptation but put some consideration into your dialogue. Porn has better dialogue <laughs> than this does. It's horrible. And the acting, dear God, if it wasn't for Tagawa, I don't think there would have been a redeemable performance with any of this script. Oh, dear God. Um, I've got... Additional thoughts piling up, but I don't want to take all of them. So, uh, Josh, what about you, buddy? Well, um, I had fun with the movie. First, the good. I thought some of the cinematography was pretty good. I liked some of the lighting effects they did. Now, I will give them this much credit because I don't disagree with you, Tom. But um, they're like, well, what's the game about? Martial arts. Okay. So what should we make the movie about? Martial arts. Okay. So basically they're like, but we need some reason to get them on there. So they wrote a few few uh, things down, had the actors say it, and then they just did all the fights. The second half of the film is just fights. It reminds me of, was it The Lost World? Jurassic Park? Mm. Where they're like, stop teasing our balls there, Spielberg. Just show us the fucking dinosaurs. That's all he really did. And he forgot about the plot. But it's like this movie, they're like, we don't need a... It's Mortal Kombat. Just fucking have them fight. Because seriously, the fights went back to back to back. Once the writers got tired of writing dialogue, they're just like, just have them fight. I don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> That's just, all anyone's here for anyways. Yeah. yeah. It's like, why, why are we wasting our time on all of this? It's like when you're watching like, a Godzilla movie and the humans are talking. Like, stop talking and please get back to Godzilla. Yeah, this you're 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 in the way of the movie. So, yeah. so stop. For what that is, I gotta give the movie a little bit of credit. Um, yes, the acting was horrible. All of the lead actors, with the exception of Robin Show, um, this extras were more experienced in martial arts than they were. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And it's funny because it's like their acting sucked too. Did they just I don't get it. They should have just hired hired the extras to do their job and it would have been a better film. Sonya only had one scene, right? Yeah, no, one she, had, she had one fight. She had multiple scenes, but she only had one fight. And that's what I meant. Yeah, she I had one one on one fight. She had the one fight in the cafeteria, but she only had the one one on one fight with Kano. Right. It was kind of ultimately a letdown. But yeah, all in all, it was fun, but it was a nostalgia fueled fun. If this movie had been what was released in 2021, it would have been terrible. Nobody would have liked it. But it's like I said, I still had fun watching it. But I like Tom. I agree with you. It's an objectively bad film. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. leading in, Dan, continue that thought. What, what did you get from it? Oh, well, again, Tom's not wrong. This is a bad movie. This is not a good film. No one is going to argue that this is some kind of a hidden gem classic film. And I think 
I agree. I think if I didn't have the nostalgia for this movie, because you know, I'm like the right generation. This movie came out at the height of Mortal Kombat's original arcade popularity. So I had some fondness for the movie, for the nostalgia of it. But if I didn't, eh, yeah, I'd probably hate this film. But I did have fun watching it. And as far as video game adaptations go, especially for the time that it came out, um, this one actually stuck pretty close to the material that they could that they had. Like, it's a tournament. It's a tournament that takes place in a different realm, and there's a four-armed dragon guy and a sorcerer that steals souls. Just use that. Make it a tournament, which is good because, like, at the time, like, the Super Mario Brothers movie came out, had nothing to do with the games. Um, Street Fighter had come out, like, I think the year before this film or around the same time as this film had absolutely nothing to do with the games. Oh, and the Double Dragon movie had come out right before this one and had nothing to do with the games. So they come out with this movie and this movie is bad like the other video game movies, but at least they tried to stick close to the material that they had. They didn't try to make the um, audience that liked the games feel stupid. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. They didn't insult their audience. They're like, hey, it's a martial arts tournament. Let's just, uh, I don't know, copy Enter the Dragon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I can understand why this one's more beloved than those ones. Um, as far as like being like a culty kind of a classic film. Uh, whereas the other ones are just, oh. But um, yeah, this is a bad film. I enjoyed watching it, though. I really did have fun watching it. And I love the sets. In this, um, I think the Goro animatronic, while it's still very much an animatronic and you could tell it's an animatronic, is impressive for the time. The CG doesn't hold up very well, but it's 1995 CG, so not really expecting it to hold up. Feels like they kind of blew their budget with it. <laughs> um, yeah. However, I, I do share the audience's sentiments that the two best fights in the film are the ones they had to add later. Like, mm -hmm. I thought the scorpion fight with, with, with Johnny Cage and the reptile fight with Liu Kang were the two best fights in the movie. Like, and those are the ones that were added in post-production because they, they needed more fights. But, I mean, that's kind of all I have. Like I said, it's it's a guilty pleasure movie of mine. I still enjoy watching it, but I'm not going to lie to anyone and say, oh, no, that's a good film. You need to watch it. I mean, if you don't really have a fondness for the Mortal Kombat games, there's really no reason to watch it. It's mm -hmm. not that good. Go watch Enter the Dragon. Much better film. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Or Bloodsport. Okay. Or Bloodsport. Bloodsport. Yeah, Bloodsport. Watch the movie that the video game wanted to be or watch the movie that the movie of the video game wanted to be. Yeah, like like I said, if you don't have a fondness for Mortal Kombat or you don't have nostalgia for it or whatever, uh, there's really no reason to watch this film. It's not that great. So um, if you were folding laundry and just needed something in the background, I mean, I could at least recommend. Yeah, it and it does much. have, like I said, it's got good soundtracks in it, and the fights are pretty good. I know the two best are the ones that added in post, but for the most part, the fights are pretty good, you know. Eh, I'll, so, I'll save my counter to that when we get to our merge thoughts, but continue. No, we can we can start merging thoughts now. Well, I'm repeating we'll myself. Robin Show is, is I'm probably fucking his name up. It's tired. I'm it's late. I've been up for almost a day now. Um, Robin Shows was amazing. He was really good in this one. Sonia and Johnny uh, Cash, whatever his fucking name is, Kate. they um, Johnny Cash. No, they, they were not. They were not good at all. Like no. Johnny jo Johnny Cage had like one or two finishing moves that you could tell he practiced every day in the mirror. Like, dude, this looks so cool. But like his kicks and stuff, they weren't practiced. But Sonia, she didn't even practice. She's all like, I saw this in a VHS instructional video that was playing at the library where I was at to read a book. I don't know where I'm going with this. But anywho, <laughs> I, I put more effort into that joke than she put into her fighting style. I mean, I was impressed by all the injuries they sustained making this. I'm beginning to think that's more carelessness than, you know, just dedication. Seriously. No, and I, it, it wasn't really carelessness. No, it, it really, like I said, I did a lot of looking up on this film when, when I was looking for trivia. It wasn't so much carelessness. They, they were actually careful with the fight choreography. It's just that they didn't want to use their fight doubles. And unfortunately, Robin Shao and Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa were really the only two that had experience basically doing their own fights, especially Robin Shao had extensive martial arts training. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same thing as like, you see actors sometimes that insist on doing their own stunts mm -hmm. and they don't want to use a stunt double because it's almost like a, 
macho thing to do or a manly thing to do is to just do your own stunts and then they get hurt they break ribs or they they twist their ankles or they do because they break legs break legs or arms <laughs> or get concussions and stuff like yeah, that it's like everybody is tom cruise yeah and it's like stunt doubles aren't there to get hurt like stunt doubles don't always break their legs or twist their ankles or hurt their arms when they're doing stunts because they know how to do those stunts they know how to do the they know how to take falls um i go back to like a professional wrestling kind of a uh comparison is taking bumps trained professional wrestlers know how to take bumps and when they're doing a match with a celebrity guest it's very noticeable that that guy doesn't know how to take bumps Mm -hmm. so stunt doubles and fight doubles are kind of in that same mold like they know how to make the punches look real or the kicks look impactful and make the falls look good and sometimes an actor doesn't have the same experience but they want to do their own stunts and sometimes when the actor wants to do their own stunts you kind of have to okay you know, especially mm-hmm. if the film has the insurance for it. Yeah, because it's definitely one of those things. It's like they'll be like, "Well, we don't want the uh, it to be obvious that it's not me." Mm-hmm. You know, and I get that, but for this movie, they should have they, they should have let their. Yeah, I think yeah. that might come with the inexperience of the director. Paul, w- this was only Paul W. S. Anderson's second film, and maybe he just didn't have the backbone or thought he had the pull to put his foot down on it. It's like, no, we're going to use fight doubles for a couple mm-hmm. of these fights. I need these fights to look good. And he also didn't know how to. Um, film them to make them look better. I'm sure in the hands of better directors, some of these people, um, especially the guy that played Johnny Cage, Lyndon Ashby, I'm sure his fights would have looked pretty decent if the, the, the cinematography had been tighter or anything else like that. But of the three of them, he was better than Sonya, but not nearly as good as Liu Kang. Uh, he definitely was like made for TV movie kind of level of action fighting. But uh, yeah, I gotta agree with you, Nigel. I think yeah, Paul W. S. Anderson did not help anyone. Yeah, like uh, Lyndon Ashby. I just looked him up a second ago. That's why I muted myself so I could type real, real quick. Um, Lyndon Ashby, when he came to do this movie, really only had boxing experience. He did not have martial arts experience. So I was noticing that in the film that when he does punches, they look pretty good. But when he had to do kicks and flips, they weren't so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what do you guys feel about the f- uh, shoehorn like lessons that you have to learn that they kept giving Liu Kang? Oh, that was so stupid. But that was kind of a callback to Chinese Hong Kong martial arts films of the 70s. Yeah, that was just like the whole fight with Sub-Zero, I felt was just like, that was lame. Mm. The Like the first 15 seconds of that fight was good. And then they just they just did my boy Sub-Zero bad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I I, uh, that, I share that criticism with the majority of the audience is that Scorpion and Sub-Zero kind of got jobbed out in this film. I, I know that Liu Kang is the main protagonist of the Mortal Kombat series, but Sub-Zero and, and Scorpion are basically the mascots of the Mortal Kombat series. Yeah. And they're the two most recognizable characters. Like, only Mortal Kombat fans or veterans of the game would know who Liu Kang is. But my mom knows who Sub-Zero is, and she's never played a single minute of Mortal Kombat. Shit, even Sub Zero got his own standalone game back in the. I forget yeah, what it was. and uh, yeah, they kind of got played, or I mean, they kind of got jobbed out in this one. It's like it, they don't even really. They only mention their rivalry in like passing when Shang Tsung says, "Deadliest of enemies," but under my control, you know, they're my allies or something like that. It's like ah, lame. Yeah. You know, and the fact, so. that, yeah, gets killed in the beginning part of it. Bizarre. It's like these are your two guys, and you kill them first 30 minutes of the movie yeah yeah because i mean even goro like i understand why goro's fights were so limited especially considering the issues they had with the animatronics Mm. but it's like none of the fights were really that epic i would say scorpion and maybe reptile yeah Yeah, they they had epic fights for sure but those are the only two but i would honestly say that that first fight with Liu kang and the one flip my hair back and forth fighter (laughs) that that one was better than sonya's I don't want to say it's better than Sub Zero's, but I would say it's almost on par with Sub Zero's. Yeah, I only I, say that because the first part of Sub that fight with Sub Zero wasn't that bad. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I kind of did like the Jobber fight a little bit, but uh, this was so bad. The editing in this movie was so bad; they didn't pace anything out. They didn't. They really didn't. They jumped from scene to scene. I do have a question. Do you guys remember? Oh, uh, it was uh, 2010 ish. They had that eight minute air quotes trailer for a Mortal Kombat movie that that one guy paid for with his own money, and it was like really huge, like 
trailer for oh mortal, mortal kombat, kombat like legacy or mortal kombat it was like called legacy or 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 it like i think it got a tv show but like it was an online only tv yeah it was show like youtube it was a web series yeah, the, 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 the air quotes real world mortal kombat yeah yeah we're like where scorpion was the uh protagonist yeah and like but it was like the trailer was like eight minutes long and the guy who i forget who did it somebody i forget who did that but he paid for it out of his own pocket to get that thing made and he really wanted to become the director for the next mortal kombat movie mm-hmm. like, uh, I, I remember loving that and really hoping that would take off and then i found out like 10 years later that they made a web series and i'm like oh okay <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of how everyone else did reacted to. It's like, oh, this is so awesome. I wish they would do something with this. We did something with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it actually isn't bad. I've actually watched the web series. It's pre- like I said, I'm a Have huge you? fan of this franchise. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise. It's uh, like I said, I'm. <laughs> We've strayed a bit off topic, though. Yeah, well, well I'm, uh, I'm, like... I know what Josh is saying, though. He's like he he would yeah. Oh, and incidentally, I did look up who edited this film. Martin Hunter. You know better. Dude, you did Full Metal Jacket, dude. Yeah. You edited Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. Or you would go on to edit Chronicles of Riddick. Okay, maybe you haven't learned your lesson. But yeah, Tom still- is. Ed- yeah, Tom here. Tom here has edited seventy three episodes of a podcast. He knows what 72. he's talking about. He hasn't edited this one yet. Oh yeah. Okay. So well, no. By the time the audience is listening to it, Tom will have edited seventy three episodes. Yeah, but so- he's critiquing somebody having. <laughs> oh, he's only yeah. got seventy two okay. under his belt while recording. Okay. I mean, you edited Event Horizon, California. And again, the first movie you ever met edit is Full Metal Jacket. And wow, just fucking wow. Um, I'll answer the question for him. I needed a new beach house. <laughs> he put in as much effort as this film deserved. Yes. Or as much effort as they paid him for. I, I think way. we're putting enough effort into these closing thoughts. <laughs> so, yeah. whatever. I, like I said, I had my closing thought is I had fun watching this film. It's a bad film. Enter the Dragon's a much better film. If you don't have the <laughs> reverence no for Mortal Cash. Yeah. And I had more fun watching Tango and Cash in, in uh, the Days of Thunder. But eh, whatever, <laughs> it's Mortal Kombat. They never made yeah. a sequel to this film, so uh, it's okay. For the best. Um, I know we haven't done this in a while, but I would not recommend this film. Nope. No, not even to be like, no. what was the 90s like? Don't. No, like yeah, I guess like- the only way I would recommend it is if um, you were already are a fan of Mortal Kombat and you've never seen it. So anyways, go, you, what were you going to say, Josh? I'll say I wouldn't recommend it either. Like, like I would recommend Buckaroo Banzai solely to watch somebody watch that movie. Um, but I, I could, I couldn't find. I can't even think. And granted, I'm not functioning 100 percent right now. Did I say words? Yes, the, the, the syllables that formed words. But yes. all right, that works. Um, I can't think of a situation where I would recommend this. Like, oh yeah, I watched that movie in the 90s. Do you recommend it? No. <laughs> so, anywho, what are we doing now? <laughs> That's it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever fine podcasts sold, barter, traded, uh, whatever. Uh, our regular episodes are Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Please like and subscribe on whatever medium you choose to listen to us on. We really appreciate it. It helps us out, helps us grow. Please leave a review for the podcast. Uh, it helps us show up in searches. So if someone's searches this movie or this movie soundtrack on Spotify, for instance, uh, our review of this movie will come up as well. So be sure to leave a review on whatever medium you choose. Like I said, it helps our channel grow out. But if you also want to chat with us on a more intimate level, intimate and public level, if you're into that, hit us up on Discord. Basically, it's a way you can chat directly with us in a public forum. There's a link in uh, the episode description and on discord.me slash fire pit. Uh, you get notifications of new episodes. And you can engage with the discussions with us and other fans of the show. So be sure to log on in. It's a fun time. And you can also email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com for those conversations that are not meant for other people. Or if you just want to send us a long message, a short message, a happy message, a sad message, or whatever other message, it's up to you. But also be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at FirePitCCE, both are linked in this episode's description. 
And uh, I would uh, like to shout out Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Joined us last week on uh, Highlander. We had fun hanging out with her, watching the movie with her. I'd also like to shout out Podbean uh, for hosting our podcast. Um, it's uh, really helped us out in the sense of like it gave us something to do during the pandemic. But uh, now that we're doing this once a week. So uh, thanks to Podbean. And also a shout out to Zencaster, our recording platform. Has saved our bacon many times, including tonight. We had some... Uh, uh, difficulties, but hey, all the audio got saved, so that helps the editor out a lot. So, thank you very much for uh, doing what you do, Zencaster. And I would like to shout out a couple of my friends who were recommended this this uh, podcast, not by me, but by another friend, Nick. So, thank you, Nick. But uh, for you, Doug and uh, Edwards, I hope you uh, have listened to more than one episode and did not start. At our first episode, like I recommended. So um, I hope you hear this, and I hope you enjoy the uh, my podcast, our podcast. No, it's yours. <laughs> yeah, it's mine. We'll just call a spade a spade. Come on. <laughs> no, and uh, kidding. I love you guys. Um, I'd also like to shout out Sync Lounge and Plex, who allow us to watch these uh, movies together and separate. I'm currently on orders again, you know, as you do. So I am in a very shitty place where, or I'm in a very place. Where, I am in a place Josh needs to be plugged into the wall. Yeah. I am in a place with some very shitty internet and it still allowed us to stay in sync and uh, able to watch the movie together. Uh, I see what you did there. Sync lounge in sync. Still clever. Bye. 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 Uh, but from my side, because Josh is now in power down mode, I would like to shout out two of our, latest uh, Facebook followers, uh, Rebecca and Erica. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, uh, whether you listen to the podcast regularly or just like to pop in to see what's going on on the site, if we post anything, or just in general, like having it on your feed. You're joined several hundred others and growing each day. Yeah, so thanks for popping in and keeping the fire pits burning. I'd also like to shout out the tool that helps make the editing possible, Audacity. Audacity is free software that allows me to cut, copy, paste everything we say, as well as merge in whatever Foley, add effects, warbly dukes, and wibbly dibblies, and all the fine editing and cleaning up that makes your ears just delight to hear us every Tuesday. So thank you, Audacity. They are free software, so we are not paying them, and they are not paying us to give them a shout-out, but I'm giving them a shout-out anyways. They're helping us make a podcast. They might help you out, too. Awesome. Well, uh, I guess that's it for tonight. Where are we going next week, guys? Uh, To an art exhibit, right? Oh, right. Yes. I think there's drawings of like tanks and planes and bombs and cavalry. It's a very, very sophisticated and pretentious show yeah. uh, involving um, art of wars come and gone and even future stuff. Oh, no, no. It's the art of war. It's the, the movies based on the book written by Sun Tzu. Oh, uh, uh... there it is. Mm. Wait, is that the one with the movie with the Hall of Violence? Sure. It could be. I mean... I haven't read The Art of War in a long time, but everyone talks about that book, so I'm sure this adaptation is going to be spot on and the best movie we've ever seen on this podcast ever. Fantastic. Well, join us next week for The Art of War. Until then, I've been Dan. I've been Josh. And I've been Tom. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. Yes, Reptile. Now to watch Earthrealm burn. This is the beginning of the end. <laughs> can, can we take these masks off now? Yes. Oh my god, yes. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh my breath stinks. Oh my beard. Oh, oh itchy. Oh, oh, masks and beards do not work together. Itchy, itchy, itchy. Itch. What is this, 2020? I know, I know right? right? Bad enough I had to wear a mask like you guys, but did you have to give me the one that spat acid? Christ, I could taste it!
Oh. Well, hey, at least you didn't have to shove a fucking dagger into your palm. That shit hurt. Every time. And I'm bleeding. Profusely. Seriously, I need to go to the hospital. Yeah, why couldn't we have, like, air conditioning arms like Dan? Are you kidding me? I think I, think I got frostbite on my fingers. I had no idea it worked like that. I feel bad for alt me. Yeah, what the hell, guys? I didn't think we would kill them. No, Tom, Tom, Tom. I checked this thing out before we came here. You don't actually die when you get killed in Outworld. See, look down there next to the ring. See, see how alt Tom is now blue too? They just died and became ghosts. And now alt Tom is a ghost too. Yeah, you, and, and you can't kill ghosts. Now all uses get to go be immortal and go on crazy ghost adventures and maybe like do a ghost podcast or something. You weak and pathetic fools, I have come for your souls. Oh no, my soul! It tickles. I made something on the good way. Oh my ghost prostate. I don't think we should stay here any longer. Nope. Nope. Yep. Yep. Nope. Um, um, <laughs> let's let this shit run its course and come back for the sequel or something. Or maybe we don't come back at all. So, <laughs> um, nice knowing you guys. Um, we out. Uh, See ya. Uh, back to the Hope elevator. part two's better than part one. Yeah, elevator, elevator. Door closed, door closed, door closed, door closed, door closed. Door closed. Door closed. Door closed. Door closed. <laughs>